Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about surviving winter in your RV. All winter, not just the week here and there. Surviving all winter. We are currently in the Northeast, so it gets pretty cold and you get a bunch of snow here a lot. So we're going to show you a bunch of things we did to prepare our, our rig as well as ourselves for camping in the RV all winter. So with that being said, let's head outside. I'll show you the things we did on the outside of the the rig to get it ready and then we'll come back in and show you some of the things we did inside all right guys we are outside we're going to show you what we do to survive winter all season long in the northeast this is what we did this year this is our new rig we have a video on it if you haven't seen it it's a wildwood heritage glen check that out but over here you can see we got the the first thing you can see obviously is the skirting we took one inch the polyiso foam and put it around the whole thing. If you can, you're gonna to wanna to put insulation around your slide outs, which we were able to on a couple of them, but the other ones are just too high. So that's one of the first things we did to survive the winter. Second, larger propane tank. We have the 100 pound propane tank uh, piped in. That's so we don't have to fill that often because when it gets low like this, we've been to seven below, the 30 pound tank only lasts two days. So not great. Not sure if you could see up under here. Let me see. Right here you can see we put poly ISO up underneath the slide outs also, because you'll get that cold air radiating through the floor. This way we eliminate some of that. Not sure also in this corner and all the slide outs, we stuffed insulation in the corners, any spot where you can see where air could get in. Uh, we did use the cold weather silver tape to hold this together. That's the only thing holding it up there is that tape. And then as you see down there on the ground, there's little landscaping spikes that holds it into the ground so it can't kick under. There we go. This is the storage locker. Bunch of stuff in here. Take a look in there. This is our wet bay. Um, you could see coming up through here, we do have heating uh, heated hose, which is right. You can see the heating part that comes off of that. That's our hose is heated. I can feel the heat on it right now. But in here, this storage thing is not per se heated, but it stayed, when it was seven below, it stayed around 48 degrees. Uh, one of the things we did do, we did put the poly ISO up in here and all the, all the gaps there, just to help with that. That is the heating duct that runs this way. There's not a vent in it, but I'm sure it radiates some heat off. But seven below, it stayed above freezing. And just in case we had this light in here with a 150 watt bulb to try to add heat, but haven't had to use it yet. And we have that on a, a smart plug, so we can just tell our Alexa or on the smartphone, tell it to turn it on. So we don't even have to come out here to mess with it. The hot water, we haven't had to do anything with that. That We have that on propane. That's what we use for that. That comes on, it keeps it warm anyway. But I would say one of the most important things, if you don't have them already, are those slide toppers. It, it saves the top of your slides like crazy. You don't have to shovel the snow off them, off the slide toppers. I still get it off, excuse me. You don't have to get the snow off your slide outs. You do have to get it off the slide toppers if there's too much. We had two feet here a couple weeks ago. We had to get it off there and make sure your vents stay clear. But we put slide toppers on all these. That was the first thing we did. Let's go around the back. You can see that poly ISO is everywhere, all the way around. Poly ISO down there at the bottom. Nothing back here. One of the one things you're gonna see is, this is part of that heated hose. We took it one step further and wrapped the heated hose in a, in a pipe insulation, just to make it that more efficient. And also when you get over here to the hose bib, we wrapped the hose bib with pipe, with, there's heating tape around that. And then that's wrapped in insulation as well with the reflective tape. So the hose bib doesn't freeze. 
but that goes the whole way. We got the 50 footer that goes from that hose bit to the other side. Then you'll see this yellow extension cord. That's one we have fed separately inside to run one of the electric heaters. We'll show you that when we get inside. Again, the foam insulation all the way around, nothing holding it but the tape and then landscape spikes at the bottom. There is the turd tube. We only have the gray water the valves that are open. So that's the only thing that goes through there to the septic. So that's it for that. The black water, you only open that when you need to. This is extension cord we have plugged in the outside of the rig, which goes up into that uh, storage bay we showed you to run that heat lamp. Same thing on this side, it's the match of the other side. You can see the foam underneath the slide outs there. But it, it, like I said, when it was seven below here, it stayed about 48, 50 degrees in that storage. So that was nice. Then here, one thing we didn't do that I almost wish we did was this part of the fifth wheel. I wish we would have put the foam around that too. It would have helped with the temperature of the floor up in that living room area. It would have helped with that. We, we put a area rug there, but still it would have helped with that, I think. Plus give you a little enclosed storage. Well, let's step back here for a sec, go around. Uh, see if we can get back far enough. There we go. Up top here, one other thing we did was these are air conditioning units. We put air conditioner covers over them to keep them sealed off, keeps the wind out and all that stuff out of there. Obviously that, that was awesome. That helped because a lot of air comes out of those units from inside. So that's pretty much all you got to do on the outside. The skirting helped tremendously because we have a thermometer underneath. And even when it was uh, seven below out, it got, it got to around 30, 32. So just right at that freeze point, and we did turn on the heat tanks. The heat tanks are, uh, the, or the tanks are heated. So we turn them on when we really need to. We've only had to do it a couple times, but pretty nice. So now that you've seen the outside, let's go inside. We'll show you what we do inside there to prep for the winter. All right, everybody. Now that we're done showing you the outside and what we do to our rig, Let's show you inside here what we do. Let's start up here in the living room. Probably the first thing you can see in here is that dehumidifier. These are a must have in the RVs for the winter because you don't, you're not running your ACs and they're not sucking the moisture out of the air. So these are important to have. Our size rig, we have three of these throughout here. We'll show you those as we go through. You can hear, you can probably hear it. You can see where the water level's at, so it does pretty good. It sucks it up. Uh, another thing we do is all the windows, let's roll this one up. We put the reflectix on there on all the windows. I mean, you can feel the cold air come off those once you put this on there, the cold air like stops. I do recommend taking them off every couple days, wiping the windows down, because you do get a lot of moisture behind them. But, uh, that's a very important step. Put that back. Next we have in here, there ain't too much. Like I said, inside is not as much as you do for the outside. Okay, pan up here to the air conditioning units. In the air conditioning units, you can get them reflective insulated plugs you can put into your vents. They fit in here just as well. We put foam, I'm not sure if you can see it from here. Let's see if we can get it down. You can't really see it in here, but we have the whole, the whole inside of that plugged with foam. That way you get no air coming out of there at all. And as we showed you from outside, you have the, the covers on the AC units, which helps the air not get in there as well. <clears throat> Those are a nice find. All this stuff, I'll leave links to it down below if you guys are interested. Uh, they are affiliate links. They do help support the channel. 
don't cost nothing extra to you. So if you do click those, we appreciate that. And up here, that's pretty much it. Just the Reflectix on all the windows, the air conditioning unit, and this top part, we have one dehumidifier. Oh, another note. Most of the, throughout the RV, we try to use the electric heat. This fireplace, we run this up here. And then down below, we'll show you in the center, we, in the kitchen area, we have another radiant type heater. And then in the back, we have one of them oil heaters. They're nice and quiet in the bedroom. But that's all you need to do up here. So let's shoot back down to the kitchen area and we'll show you what we do down there. One more thing up here I also like to mention is we have one of these weather stations that have three different probes and you can label them what room they're in. Like you see that top left one is the master bedroom. That's the current temperature in there right now. Upstairs in the loft is 65. The storage, which is the underbelly storage on this because it is kind of cold outside, is 47 right now. And then at the display right here where we're at is 67. Uh, so, I mean, it could be a little higher there because we're by the fireplace, but that's this is very important to have to monitor everything. You can also set alarms on here. So like if the temperature in the storage got too low, alarm will go off and remind you to turn on like maybe your heat lamp um, for any of those. So very important thing to have. Now that we're done up there in the living room, Couple things we'll show you in this room. There's not much in the kitchen area that you gotta worry about. Of course, you're gonna want some kind of mat in front of your door. Otherwise, you're tracking in all kinds of everything. This will catch you. As you can see, it gets dingy pretty quick. So you'll find yourself cleaning that often. Then, of course, a little boot tray catches anything else so you can set your shoes out of the way. And then underneath the steps on this particular rig, we can store some stuff there. And if we back up here a little more, You'll see that other heater we were talking about. It's, it's the uh, Mr. Heater. It works awesome. And for the price, it's not bad. Like I said, you're going to want to go mostly electric heaters because your regular furnace that comes in your RV puts a lot of moisture in the air. So you want to try to keep as much moisture down as you can. But So use your electrics. Uh, these keep up with it most of the time until it gets down into like the low teens, single digits, then the other one will have to kick on once in a while, but. All right, guys, also another note here on the kitchen is when if you are heating with electric like we are, you don't wanna overload your circuits in your RV. You'll just get the wires hot, could cause an issue. So if you can, from outside, like I showed you out there, we have one coming from the, the pedestal. Just plug that into the pedestal, run it inside your RV somewhere. That way you can plug in a heater and that's the one we have on the Mr. Heater in the kitchen dining area. That way it's on a different circuit. You're not overloading your unit with all the electric that you're trying to run because they're not made for that, that level of running on all of them. So important note, try to run some cords separately. Of course, underneath your sink, if it gets too cold, you can open your drawers, make sure, or the doors, make sure heat gets under there. That's important. And of course the windows out here you can't see them, but all these ones have the Reflectix on it as well. You can see it. They're all done in Reflectix. And that helps tremendously. So let's shoot down the hallway here and see what else is down there. One more thing before we leave this room. You can see we normally leave the heat around, let's see, we're at 65 during the day and we go down to 60 at night. It's currently 68 in here and it's in the low 20s outside right now. So you can see the electrics keep up with that pretty good and then we don't need to use our our tank heaters until it gets really cold uh, that's why it's important to have that uh, let's get you over here it's important to have it's important to have a thermometer underneath your unit right now it's 35 underneath our our rig and uh, which means we don't have to kick the tank heaters on and that's just randomly in a spot. The tanks are even further up in with insulation, so they're probably a little bit warmer, but we go by this to let us know when we should turn on our tank heaters. And we do that around 30 degrees. That seems to work for us pretty well. So again, I recommend one of these. This is the Thermal Pro. Awesome, I like it. I'll leave links in the description for that as well if you're interested in one of these, but that's a must have to monitor the underneath temperature.
All right, we're running down the hall here, heading to the master. Uh, you have the bathroom here, but there's not much you need to do in the bathroom. Um, as you can see up on your roof, if you have a vent above your shower, like a lot of them had the square ones, the newer ones will have like the skylight. You can stuff insulation up in there as well. Uh, we like the light that comes through, so the wife wanted to leave it open, so we didn't insulate that, but that's all you really have to do in here. And if you are heating with electric, leave your bathroom door open. It'll allow the heat to get in there as well. Whoa. Now we're heading into the master. We go. Not much in here either. As you can see, we have that oil-filled heater. I like it in the room because it's nice and quiet. Doesn't make any noise. And then the only other thing we have in here is the dehumidifier. As you can see, it's got a bunch of water in it. So they are sucking a lot of water out. And then there's one up in the loft. That's the only thing different up there is that. And then the windows, of course, have the reflectics. Here is one of them sensors I was telling you about for that unit up in the front living room. It tells you the temperature in each room. This is one of the sensors for that. That's where we keep that. And then, like I said, reflectics on the window. And this is a big window, so it's all covered. All of those are covered. Well, there you have it, guys. That is just some of the things you can do to your rig inside and out to prepare for winter camping all year long. Um, well, all year, all winter, which in the Northeast here seems to be like six months, but that's some of the things you can do. Once you have that set, I think you'll be able to make it through the winter pretty good. We've been down the seven below so far and it's handled everything tremendously, loving it. Um, to prepare yourself though, you gotta understand it's gonna be a little different than you know, in your typical house, because you are going to have the condensation. You are going to feel that little bit of, little bit of coldness sometimes. That's why we got blankets all over, you know, slippers. If you got them for inside blankets to cover up, snuggle up. It's uh that's something to get used to the moisture dehumidifier dehumidifiers for sure. Our younger son that lives, it's here with us. He, we give him the chore of walking around and wiping the condensation every so often. So that gives him something to do and it helps your, your rig out because you, you will still get condensation, but it won't be as much if you're using the dehumidifiers. Like I said, we'll leave links to the dehumidifiers and thermometers, all that stuff that makes it easier. Uh, there are many options for your skirting. If you didn't want to use the poly ISO because it, it can get expensive. It's not something you can carry around with you. So if you plan on doing this often, you might want to go with a different setup. There are companies that have RV skirting. We just found that to be pretty expensive and we don't plan on doing much winter camping after this winter. So we're just gonna reuse the foam that we have on here and put it in the, in the shop. Um, or maybe you could even sell it or something on the marketplace. Also, like I said, the front, if you can enclose the front, you'll have a little bit of storage and it'll make your floor in the living room or in your upper part feel a little warmer. We do have the rug on the floor, which helps. But uh, it would have been better to close the front end, but we just saved a few bucks and didn't enclose that piece. But it's okay. It's You don't have to, but it is nice if you plan on being someplace for a while. Gives you something out of the weather to store some, some stuff that don't get hurt by the weather. Well, that about sums it up. Don't, be, let, don't let the winter uh, scare you away from camping. It's still a cool experience. There's a lot of nice places to see that look beautiful in the winter. So you could do some of these things we showed you. Your rig will be ready to go. And then you be on your way to enjoying life. With that being said, guys, if there's any questions, comments, or concerns, please hit us up and down in the comments section. We get to every single one of them right now. <laughs> and then um, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so you know when we got a new video coming out. We got a few more in the works. It is kind of cold here, so it does slow down the production a little bit. But we're getting them out for you guys. So until next time, guys, try something new.